Welcome to History's Hidden Tales, where we travel back in time to uncover the most extraordinary stories of our planet's past. Today's episode takes us millions of years into the Paleocene epochs to meet one of the greatest wonders in the history of reptiles, Titanoboa. Picture a snake so large it could swallow a crocodile whole, a reptile that ruled the tropical wetlands of ancient South America. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll embark on a deep dive into its habitat, its discovery, how it lived, and the role it played in shaping our understanding of prehistoric life on Earth. Let's begin. Our story begins approximately 58 to 60 million years ago, a time period known as the Paleocene Epoch. Dinosaurs, apart from birds, had been wiped out just a few million years prior in the catastrophic events at the end of the Cretaceous. Without the dominant presence of tyrannosaurs and other giant reptiles, new life forms began to flourish. Mammals were evolving rapidly, birds were diversifying, and in the lush rainforests of what is now northern South America, reptiles were also taking advantage advantage of new ecological niches. This was a world unlike today's. Global temperatures were higher, the climate was warmer and more humid. Northern Colombia, specifically the region we now call La Guajira, wasn't the dry zone we see today. Instead, it was covered in extensive swampy forests, teeming with fish, turtles, and ancient crocodilians. This was the perfect environment for a snake to reach unprecedented sizes. Fast forward to the early 2000s, Sarah Hawn, one of the largest open pit coal mines in the world, located in La Guajira, Colombia. Paleontologists ventured into these coal mines not just to observe the vast deposits of coal, but also to examine the layers of ancient rock harboring fossils. It was here that they found something astonishing. Vertebrae so large that at first, some scientists assumed they belonged to a crocodile. But on closer inspection, it became clear these fossils were from a snake. And not just any snake, but one that exceeded anything known before. The name given to this gigantic serpent was Titanoboa cerejonensis, literally translating to the Titan boa from Sarah Jean. Its official discovery was announced in 2009, turning the paleontological world upside down. Suddenly, everyone wanted to know how big could a snake really get. So let's talk numbers. Fossil evidence suggests Titanoboa could reach lengths of 40 to 50, that's about 12 to 15 meters, and weigh over 2,500 pounds, over Xeno 100 kilograms. For perspective, imagine a snake longer than a school bus slithering through the dense tropical undergrowth. Modern day anacondas, among the largest snakes living today typically max out around 20 to 30 feet, 6 to 9 meters in rare cases. Pythons, such as the reticulated python, can also approach the 20 to 30 feet range, but Titanoboa dwarfed them all. It likely had a girth so thick it would be comparable to an oil drum. Its vertebrae alone were larger than the palm of an adult human hand. Impressive evidence of its massive frame. How did it support such size? Being cold-blooded, snakes depend on external heat to regulate their body temperature. The Paleocene was significant warmer, providing these reptiles with an extended growth period and a vast supply of prey. This combination of abundant resources and high ambient temperatures allowed Titanoboa to reach its extraordinary dimensions. The Sarajan Formation doesn't just give us fossils of Titanoboa. Paleontologists have uncovered the remains of giant turtles, ancient crocodiles, and an array of fish species. These discoveries paint a vivid picture of an expansive tropical wetland system. Imagine slow-moving rivers, swampy lagoons, and dense foliage. Titanoboa thrived here, spending much of its time in or around water. Snakes are adept swimmers, and large boas today like anacondas often lurk in murky waters, hunting prey that comes to drink at the water's edge. Titanoboa, with its immense body mass, likely followed a similar lifestyle. Under the dense canopy of broad-leafed plants, the humidity and warmth would have remained constant. Fallen logs, thick mud banks, and shallow riverbeds offered perfect hiding spots for an ambush predator. Coupled with with a robust prey base, fish, smaller reptiles, amphibians, and other vertebrates, Titanoboa had everything it needed to maintain its massive bulk. So what did a 50-foot snake eat, and how did it hunt? Researchers hypothesized Titanoboa's diet included large fish, giant turtles, and even primitive crocodile relatives. Given its aquatic inclination, fish likely made up a good portion of its menu. Modern anacondas can subdue caimans and capybaras with powerful constriction. Titanoboa, being even larger, larger, probably had no trouble overpowering crocodilians of its time. Constriction is a key tactic. Boas and pythons coil around their prey, tightening with each exhale until circulation and life ceases. Titanoboa's size would have made its constriction force enormous, likely sufficient to crush the ribs of large vertebrates. Because it inhabited a lush, watery environment, it could ambush prey near riverbanks or submerge itself and launch a surprise attack from below. However, there's a possibility that Titanoboa was more of a 
fish eater than previously thought. Paleontologists suggest its jaws and skull structure might have been well suited for gripping slippery aquatic prey. Still, a snake this large wouldn't pass up a crocodile meal if the opportunity arose. Now, let's delve into the body plan of boas. Boas are a family of non-venomous constricting snakes. Titanoboa, specifically, is considered a close relative of modern-day boas, though it's certainly in a category of its own size-wise. While today's largest boas and pythons can weigh a few hundred pounds at most, Titanoboa is estimated to have weighed 10 times that amount. This difference is partially due to the thermophysiological advantages it had in the Paleocene. Warmer temperatures can accelerate metabolism and growth rates in cold-blooded animals. Scientists can approximate Titanoboa's size by analyzing the ratio between the width of its vertebrae and that of modern snakes. Because these correlations remain fairly consistent across snake species, scaling up from enormous vertebrae led researchers to determine Titanoboa's record-setting length and weight. A crucial question is, why did Titanoboa become so enormous? One of the primary reasons is the Paleocene's warmer climate. Estimates to suggest global temperatures were anywhere from 5 to 8 degrees Celsius warmer than they are today. This allowed cold-blooded animals to sustain larger body sizes because their internal temperatures could remain at optimal levels for growth year-round. Additionally, the environment was teeming with abundant prey and less competition from other large predators, especially after the dinosaur's extinction. Titanoboa, therefore, filled a top predator role in these swampy ecosystems. Over millions of years, as Earth's climate began to cool and ecosystems changed, conditions might have become less hospitable for mega-reptiles like Titanoboa. This changing climate, combined with evolving mammalian predators and shifting habitats, likely contributed to the eventual disappearance of these gargantuan snakes. It's difficult to pinpoint the exact moment Titanoboa vanished from Earth's ecosystems. Fossil records show that by the Eocene epoch, roughly 10 million years after Titanoboa roamed, its remains no longer appear. The climate cooled, sea levels shifted, and new species competed for resources. It's a story repeated throughout Earth's history. Massive creatures often find themselves at a disadvantage when their environment rapidly changes. Yet, Titanoboa's legacy endures. It's discovery forced scientists to reconsider the upper limits of snake size and taught us that the Paleocene was a period of remarkable biodiversity. Each fossil we uncover from the Sarahan Formation reveals a more complex picture of ancient tropical ecosystems where giant turtles, crocodilians, and of course, the world's largest snake thrive. One of the most fascinating parts of Titanoboa's story is the sheer detective work that goes into paleontology. Scientists don't find a perfectly laid out skeleton waiting to be photographed. Instead, they carefully carefully excavate rocks and coal layers, unearthing fossil fragments piece by piece, vertebra by vertebra. Paleontologists compared their findings to those of modern boa constrictors and anacondas. By understanding the relationship between vertebra size and total body length, they built a model to reconstruct a snake's overall dimensions. It's a method that's part science, part puzzle solving. And the Titan Oboa puzzle is one that truly showcases how thorough and creative paleontologists must be. You might be wondering, what does Titan Oboa Boa have to do with us today? Well, studying these ancient climates and ecosystems can reveal how life responds to temperature shifts. During the Paleocene, reptiles like Titanoboa took advantage of warmer conditions and thrived at sizes we struggle to imagine. But when climates cooled, these giants disappeared. Today our planet is once again warming, though at an unprecedented rate due to human activities. We don't expect to see Titanoboa re-emerge. Species can't simply reappear once they're extinct. But we might see changes in the size and distribution of some reptiles. Studying the fossil record helps us understand the long-term consequences of significant climate changes and how ecosystems adapt or fail to adapt over time. Whenever people hear about a giant snake, imaginations run wild. Movies and television often depict enormous serpent-like creatures. Think of anacondas or pythons that exceed normal sizes. But Titanoboa wasn't a Hollywood invention. It was real. Some might fear that Titanoboa lurks in remote Amazonian swamps, waiting for unsuspecting travelers. Rest assured, this snake is long gone. But the notion of enormous snakes captures the human psyche, our fascination with predators that could, in theory, see us as prey. It also reminds us that nature can produce truly staggering life forms, given the right conditions and enough time. Let's recap our journey. We ventured back to the Paleocene epoch when Earth was warmer and dinosaurs were no more. In that steamy, swampy environment, Titanoboa reigned supreme, reaching lengths of up to 50 feet and weights over 2,500 pounds. Its fossils were first unearthed in the Sarajan coal mine in Colombia, forever altering our view of what snakes could be. As a top predator, Titanoboa likely shaped the food web, keeping
keeping populations of fish and crocodilians in check. Then, as the climate shifted, these giant reptiles disappeared, leaving behind only fragments of their story in the fossil record. Today, they stand as a testament to evolution's power and the ever-changing face of life on our planet. Thanks for joining me on this exploration of Titanoboa, the mightiest snake that ever lived. If this prehistoric giant has sparked your curiosity, be sure to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. What aspects of Titanoboa fascinate you the most? Which other prehistoric beasts would you like to learn about in future episodes of History's Hidden Tales? From the fascinating world of ancient reptiles to the mysteries of Earth's changing climate, there's always more to discover. This has been History's Hidden Tales, reminding you to keep exploring and stay curious. Thank you for listening, and see you on the next adventure.